Welcome back. I'm Coach Vicki Francois, coming to you here from River Chapel Assembly of God in Bullhead City, Arizona. And I'm so happy to be here today. And thank you so much for joining me. I have a great class coming up today. I think you're going to enjoy it, and I'm so excited to share it with you. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our website, if you're watching us online, there'll be a little green square down in the bottom right-hand corner. Just click that and subscribe so you don't miss anything. I think you'll enjoy this class. Now, today, we're going to continue with our second class on healthy habits for a healthy spiritual life. Now, these classes are designed to help us all with our spiritual growth and our spiritual mature, maturity. Last week, we talked about the meaning of spiritual maturity, what it means, and basically it's being Christ-like. We're trained to be like Christ was in his ministry. And we talked about some of the facts about spiritual maturity, that it's not automatic, that it is a process, and that it does take discipline. Now, understanding discipleship, we went over that, and mature believers are called disciples. And the word disciple comes from um, discipline. And we're learning to be disciplined in God's word, so we're Christ's disciples. Mature, um, excuse me, the more like Christ we become, too, the more God is able to use us in his, um, for his purposes. And we talked about how the mark of a disciple is being cross-bearing. And that means doing whatever it takes to follow Christ. And we do this by developing healthy habits for healthy Christians. And so I have a question today. Have you ever, have you made the commitment yet to our commitment statement? If not, I encourage you to do so. Our commitment statement is, I will commit myself to all of the habits necessary for my spiritual maturity. So important when we do this. Let's start today by asking God to help us, shall we? Dear Jesus, today we come to you with a willing heart, ready to commit to all of the habits that are needed to put you first in our lives. Not just today, but for every day, Lord. Help us to grow in our spiritual maturity and to commit ourselves to get into the meat of your word and help us to receive your truths that are written in your word deep into our soul and make sure we water these by prayer and reading your word so that we can grow healthy and strong mature and mature in our spiritual lives, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, today we're going to be discussing these few habits, and um, these are going to help us to be able to keep that commitment to grow stronger spiritually. In today's class, we're going to go over, in um, the first part we're going to be going over is Bible study, and um, we'll talk about how to get more from our Bible, and that simply is, we need to accept it as, as authority, and how we must take in and absorb all of its truths. And how we do that by reading and by hearing and by studying and memorizing and by meditating on and receiving God's word with an open heart. And we're going to talk about um, how to apply its principles and its rules to our lives. And we do this by claiming his promises. We need to share his promises with others. And we need to apply scriptures to our own lives, too. Now, we see the things um, that we talk about in the next part of our class. We're going to talk about prayer. And we're going to talk about the purpose of daily prayer and how it's to give devotion to God, to get direction from God, to take delight in the Lord, and to grow more like Christ. Plus, we'll talk about six other reasons, and that's because God uh, loves to hear from his children. We're his children. And it deepens our trust in the Lord, and it causes us to, to depend on him more, and it gives us the chance to express ourselves completely to God. And because our prayers move the heart of God, when we pray, it touches him. 
and because we um, get to be involved in what's God, what God is doing around us in our world. And we'll talk about how to begin a daily prayer time and how, it's, how we need to select a specific time and place to pray and we need to follow a simple plan. So let's go ahead and start with the first part of Bible study and prayer, how to get more from our Bible. Let's start by getting a grasp on God's word. First, we need to make sure we accept God's word as authority over all parts of our life. We need to believe every word in that Bible. You know, if you believe that Jesus saved you, that he died on the cross and rose again, then you need to believe every single word in his word, in his book, in his Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it tells us all scripture is God-breathed and it's useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And you know, that's what we are. We're all, we're all servants of God. Remember, Jesus didn't come here to be served, but he came here to serve too, and we're learning to be like him. Once you really believe this, you're going to get so much more out of, re out of your daily readings in the Bible. Now, the next point we, we need to go over is um, to get more from your Bible, you need to really accept its authority. Your attitude toward the Bible makes a huge difference um, in your life every day. Let's read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, We also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but actually as it is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. Now, what, one thing that we believe, is we simply believe this, we believe only what the Bible says. There, you know, there's not now, nor will there ever be any books or verses or ideas added to or placed beside the Bible as equal to its authority or its revelation. And also that all preaching and all teaching, all prophesying, and any other communication made in the name of the Lord is subject to the measurement of the Holy Bible. If it's not in his word, then it's not from God. We look at the next thing um, that we need to do to get more out of our Bible, and that's you must assimilate its truths. Now, assimilate is to take in and to understand fully. You might wonder how we do this. Well, we do it first by hearing God's word. Your faith will increase the more you hear God's word. When we share God's word with others, when we hear God's word, when we come to church or to our small groups, or, you know, we get together with fellowship Christians, that's when our faith grows. Remember, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our teacher, and he's going to help us understand everything we read. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. The next way we um, hold on. Okay, the next point we're going to make is we need to read God's word. We have God's promise that we will be blessed if we read aloud His word and take it to heart what's written in there. It says in Revelations chapter one verse three, "Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy." And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near, like Pastor Bruce was saying this morning. How often should you read God's word? Do you remember this from last week? It's daily. Yes, it's daily. Remember, 
We're developing habits. Healthy habits come by frequent repetition. It takes a daily process. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 19, it tells us the scriptures shall be his constant companion. He must read from it every day of his life so that he will learn to respect the Lord his God by obeying all of his commands. You notice it doesn't say just read it. We also have to obey it. The next point is studying God's word. We need to not just read the word, but to truly study his word, to see how we can apply what it says to our lives today. In Acts chapter 17, verse 11, it says, they accepted the message eagerly and studied the scriptures every day. The next thing we need to do is memorize God's word. The more we memorize God's word, the easier it is to meditate on these whenever we need to, you know, whenever trouble arises, when we have fear of any kind or any kind of trouble in our lives. We've meditated on it, we've memorized it, and so we, we can recall it whether our Bible is in our hands or at our, at our access or not. In Proverbs chapter seven, verses two through three, it says, guard my words as your most precious possession. Write them down and also keep them within your heart. That would be memorizing them. Then we need to meditate on God's word. Again, it's more easy to meditate on God's word if you're memorizing it. We need to take the time and trouble to do that. Remember what we said last week, it is time and trouble to have a healthy spiritual relationship. So to take the time to memorize them so that you can meditate on them when you need to. We're developing the healthy habits. Look in Psalms chapter one, verses two through three. It says, those who are always meditating on his laws are like trees along the river bank bearing fruit. They never wither, and whatever they do prospers. Now what meditation is, is just focusing. It, it's using focused thinking about the Bible verse that you're reading in order to discover how you can apply that scripture to your own life today. Then you need to receive God's word with an open heart. That means to welcome God's word, to be excited, to happy to hear it. In Luke 8, chapter, chapter 8, verses 13 through 18, it says, those on the, on the rocky ground are those who receive his word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. Remember when the seeds, um, which are God's word, are planted, or, or given out, like I'm te talking today, or like when you hear his word, it can either be planted deep to grow fruit in your heart, you remember it, or it might be shallow, that it withers at the first little sign of trouble, or it could be something that just doesn't even, doesn't even register to you. It's all in the way that you allow it to be watered, the way you focus on it. So, um, they believed for a little while, the ones that fell on the rocky ground, they believed for a little while, but in time of testing, they fall away from what they read. They fall away. Verse 14 says, the seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life worries, by riches, by pleasures, and they do not mature. And verse 15 says, but the seed on good soil stands for those with noble and good heart who hear the word, who retain it. Oh, who, mm -hmm. who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. No one, verse 16, no one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. Remember, the light of Jesus lives in us and we need to let that light shine, let people hear about Jesus through us. For there is nothing hidden 
that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever will be given more, whoever has will be given more, and whoever does not have even what they think they have will be taken from them. That was in Luke 8, 13 through 18 again. Now the word receive in Greek means to welcome, so make sure you welcome God's word. Now next is, uh, next step in getting more from your Bible is you must apply its principles to your life. You can't just read it and think it was just for yesterday. We must apply it to our own lives. Don't just read it, but do what the Bible says. We need to claim his promises as our own personal promises from God because that's really what they are. And in John chapter 13, verse 17, chapter 13, verse 17, it says, Once you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. And then um, in James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So claim his promises. Claim them on your life. Now, I put a list of scriptures together to help us through different kinds of trials uh, that might be coming up. But you might want to drop these down or take a picture of the screenshot or something because they're good to have, to know. If you're facing any kind of battle, a really good scripture, some, I have a few really good scriptures for this, if any kind of battle is coming up in your life. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. And then in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then if you're facing any kind of money issues, some good scriptures to memorize here would be Philippians 4, verse 19. It says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And remember, we need to believe every word of the Bible. Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the ways that the sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditate on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither Whatever they do prospers. Isn't that a great promise? And the next one is fear. If, if you have any kind of fear come up in your life about anything, this is a good one to remember. Psalms 27.1 tells us, The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then in sickness, a great one is Psalms 103, verses 2 through 3. If you're facing any kind of illness or sickness, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. For who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say many. It says all. But here's the key. There's many, many verses in the Bible. I'll share them in another class that talk about how this is all by your faith you're healed. Go and let it be done according to your faith. So you have to have the faith in his word and stand on that faith. And then confidence is the next one. If you need confidence in anything, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, 
but God has been making it grow. So you can have confidence that if he puts something on your heart to do, you're going to succeed because he'll make it grow. The next one is safety. If you're feeling like you're not secure and you need safety, Psalms 121.8. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. He'll always be with you. He'll never leave you. You're safe in his, in his care. Now, after we read God's word, the next thing we're supposed to do is share it with other people. We're called to share our testimony in the word of God every opportunity we have. We're called to be his witnesses. Look in Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? So you need to tell them what you've learned. And then the next point we need to look at is how to apply scripture. There are three things to think about here. To apply scripture, we need to ask three different things. The first ask is, what did it mean to the original hearers? When this was first presented, what did it mean to them? The second thing we need to ask is, what's the underlying timeless principle in it that still applies in today's life? And then the third ask you need to make is, how can I practice that principle in my own life today? We need to meditate on this when we're reading a scripture until the Lord brings to our heart what it is that applies to our life today. Now let's look at prayer. This is talking with God. We need to talk to God every day like we talked about last week. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, it says, Always be joyful, never stop praying, and be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So whatever you're going through, just be thankful, pray about it, and know that it's God's will for you. He has something for you in, in what you're going through. Now, in the beginning, we were all created to have a, a fellowship with God. But because of Adam and Eve's fall, then Christ had to come and sacrifice himself for us so that we could have a relationship again with God our Father. Jesus showed us how to have a personal relationship with God through prayer. And he showed us that prayer is what gave him his strength too when he was a human here on earth. Every person who has ever been affected, affected in service for God has learned this practice, this habit. The only way to be a healthy Christian is to commune with God daily through your prayer. Make it a, a great habit. Now the purpose of daily prayer time, the first purpose is it's, it's to, get, to give devotion to God. You know, Hezek, um, in 2 Chronicles 31, 21, it says Hezekiah was successful because everything he did, he did in a spirit of complete devotion to God. The next reason is to get direction from God. Now, we do this by reading what he says and praying for direction from God. In Psalms 25, 4, it says, Show me the path where I should go, O Lord. Point me to the right road for me to walk. Lead me. So we need to pray, and the Lord will show it to us. The Holy Spirit will tell us what, he, what we need to do. The third thing is to gain delight in the Lord. We need our joy to come from God alone. Not the world, not anything in the world, but our joy needs to truly come from God. When we delight in the Lord, He promises us that if we delight in Him, He's going to give us the desires of our heart. This is because if we truly are delighted in the Lord, our desires are going to be what pleases Him. 
Look in Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The next point is to grow more like God, more like Jesus, like we're supposed to do. Remember, our goal is to be like Christ, so we need to talk to God and listen to his words to do just that, be more like Christ. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given up us his very great and precious promise so that through them you might may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. And the divine nature is to be like Christ again. So that would say, um, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature in being like Christ. In the next slide, there, I'm going to give you six more answers to the question, why should we pray? Because God, you might wonder, why do we need to pray? God knows everything anyway. He's almighty. He's sovereign. He's in control of all things. What could we possibly add to his wisdom with our feeble attempts at prayer? Well, that might be a great question, but let me give you six reasons why. First, we pray because we're God's children and he loves to hear from us. Look in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. It says, For the Lord your God is, a, is living among you. He's a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. The second reason we pray because it Depend, it deepens our trust in God. In Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. The third thing we need, to, um, the third reason we pray is it causes us to depend on God for every for our daily needs. In Isaiah 40, verse 26, it says, look up to the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, um, one after another, calling each one by name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. The fourth reason we pray is because it gives us a chance to express ourselves completely to the Lord. Psalms 68, um, 62 verse 8 says, Oh my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. You can tell him anything. Fifth, we pray because our prayers move the heart of God. James 4, verse 2 says, You want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and you wage war to take it from them. You don't, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You have to ask. He's just not going to give you things because he knows you want them. You have to ask him. The sixth reason we pray is because it's an amazing way to get involved in what's God, what God is already doing around us everywhere. And we can be involved by praying for our fellow believers, too. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 25, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, pray for us. And that's just, you need to pray for all of your fellow brothers and sisters. We all need it. You know, Mother Teresa had a saying on prayer. She said, God shapes the world by prayer, 
The more praying there is in the world, the better the world will be, the lighter the forces against evil. Now let's take a look at the next part of talking with God. How to begin our daily prayer time. Well, the best way to learn this is to learn from the three ways from Jesus. First, you need to select a certain time and place. You know, Jesus got up early in the morning and he um, spent time every day with his Heavenly Father. In order for prayer to work in our lives, we need to set the same, the same goals. We need to do, to do the same habits. Make that appointment with God every day and make sure you keep it. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, he left the house, and went to a solitary place where he prayed. Well, we need to select a specific place. That's the second thing we need to do. Your prayer place needs to be an undistracted environment where you can pray out loud or pray worship music or that's your prayer place. That's your time not to be quiet, but to be talking to the Lord. And the third thing we need to do is follow the simple plan. Go into your prayer time with a plan. Now, if it changes, that's okay. Plans change. But have a plan going in there. Just don't go in and then try to make it up. Um, you know, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, and he gave them a plan, and we call it the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to go over that with you in a minute, but first I want to give you a real quick 15-minute plan that might get you started if you, if you need a little help in this area. You know, a, a quick way to spend 15 minutes and get your meditation and devotion in, too, would be to pick a scripture and read that verse for four minutes. Just read over it and over for four minutes. And then spend another four minutes just thinking about it, reflecting on what you just read. That's eight minutes, right? And then take a pencil and paper and just write down anything that the Lord puts on your mind or on your heart about that or how you should apply it to your own life or what it means to you. And then for the last four minutes, make your request known unto God. Pray and ask Him for the things you need. And right there you've spent 15 minutes with the Lord. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Do not get tired of doing what is right, for after a while we'll reap a harvest of blessings if we don't get discouraged and give up. So make sure you stick with it. You'll get blessings from it. Now let's talk about the Lord's Supper. This was the sample that he gave, that Jesus gave his disciples when they asked him, teach us to pray. This is in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. It says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Well, the Lord's prayer is for talking with God, remember. And the first thing you need to do is connect with God Rationally, you start with our Father in Heaven, yeah? Our Father in Heaven. We call Him Father, as it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. It says, you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we call Him Abba Father. You know, God loves when we call Him Father. Make sure you establish your relationship with him. You're his child. Thank him for that relationship. And then you need to worship his name. Hallowed be your name. In Proverbs 18, verse 10, God's name is a place of protection. The righteous can run there and be safe. So, quick side note, some of the other names for him are righteousness because he makes us clean. Sanctifier, because he has called me and set me apart. He's our healer. He heals all my diseases. He is a banner of victory. He has defeated my enemy. He's our shepherd. He speaks to me and he leads me. 
He's peace. He is my peace in every storm. And he's a provider. He supplies all my needs. And then you get into your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Luke chapter 12, verse 31, it says he will always give you all you need from day to day if you will make the kingdom of God your primary concern. Our primary concern, the kingdom of God. That's the first thing that should be on our mind in any situation. Now God's priorities are saving the lost, guiding those in authority like parents, like our spiritual leaders, like our governmental leaders, like our workplace leaders, and his third priority is his will in our lives. Now the fourth thing is depend on him for everything. Give us this day our daily bread. In Psalms 121 verses 1 and 2 it says, I look up to the mountains. Where does my help come? Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. So make sure you ask God what you need and trust him for the answer. And then get your heart right with God and with people. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So forgive us our debts. It's very important to confess them to him. Ask God to check your hearts for your motives. On make sure that you're right with him. And receive his forgiveness for any area that he brings to mind. Forgive anyone who's offended you for anything because um, you have to forgive if you want to be forgiven. And then... You need to engage in spiritual warfare. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Ephesians 6.12, it says, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And then we need to take our stand against the enemy and fight the good fight of faith, every lie that the enemy has told you should be replaced with the truth of God's word. We, we need to express faith in God's ability. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the, is the glory forever. And in Jeremiah 32, 17, it says, Ah, oh, so the Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. And then you end your prayer time reminding yourself of God's ability. Return to praise him and make your faith, faith declarations. It says, yours is the kingdom. All rule belongs to you. Yours is the power. A mightiness comes from you. All mightiness comes from you. And yours is the glory. Your victory shall be complete. Now, so remember when you pray, make sure you use the model of Jesus that he just gave us. We'll go over it real quickly once again. Then... This then is how you should pray. Matthew 6, 19 through, 9 through 15, it says, Praise, begin by expressing your love to God, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then, purpose, commit yourself to doing God's will. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, not your own will, right? And then provisions, ask God to provide your daily needs. Give us today our daily bread. And that means not just food, but everything you need for the day. And then pardon. Ask God to forgive us our sins. Forgive us our debts. And people, pray for other people. As we also have forgiven our debtors. And protection. Ask for spiritual protection. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
Now, we went over two very important habits that we need to make sure we get used to and do it every day so that it becomes a true habit. Bible study and prayer. Let's recap a little bit what we talked about today. Bible study is how to get more from my Bible. You must accept its authority. Nothing else replaces or adds to God's word. Number two, you must absorb it and take in its truths. And you do this by hearing, by reading, by studying, by memorizing, by meditating on and receiving God's word with an open heart. And you must apply its principles and its rules. You must claim his promises, you must share his promises, and you must apply the scriptures to your own life. Then we talked about prayer. The purpose of daily prayer time is to give devotion to God, to get direction from God, to get delight in God, and to grow more like God or more like Christ. We talked about how to begin a daily prayer time, that we need a specific time, a specific place, and the following simple plan. Now next class, we're gonna go over the next habit of fellowship with other believers. And we'll talk about the purpose of small groups or life groups, some people call them. And we'll talk about some ground rules that we should follow doing that. Now, I want to thank you again so much for joining me for this class. I hope you've gotten something out of it. Please leave comments on the web and let me know how you feel, those of you that were here with me. And I look forward to your feedback. Make sure you check that little green box on the bottom right of the screen and subscribe so you don't miss when this is posted, when the next class has come up, and any announcements we have. Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to be a, again to share your word. And I thank you for helping us to make the commitment to grow healthier in your word by praying and by believing in your word and by fellowshipping together, Lord. Help us to make these daily habits and bring us back next time safe. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.